गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट चैप्टर टेन इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड पार्ट टू इन पार्ट वन वी हैव लर्न कंसेप्ट ऑफ इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड इंपोर्टेंस इंसेंटिव फॉर एक्सपोर्ट ट्रेड राइट इंपॉर्टेंस बेनिफिट्स ऑफ डिविजन ऑफ लेबर एंड स्पेशलाइजेशन डेवलपमेंट ऑफ अंडर डेवलप कंट्रीज मैक्सिम यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ रिसोर्स डेवलपमेंट ऑफ ऑक्जिलरी सर्विसज मेंटेन्स प्राइस स्टेबिलिटी हाई स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ लिविंग एक्सचेंज ऑफ कल्चर फैशन एंड नॉलेज हेल्पफुल इन कैलामिटीज वर्ल्ड एज मार्केट इंसेंटिव फॉर एक्सपोर्ट ट्रेड ट्रेड एग्रीमेंट फिनांशियल एंड इकोनॉमिक इनकरेजमेंट कलेक्टिव एंड सिस्टमेटिक इनकरेजमेंट फिनांशियल फैसिलिटीज एंड सर्विसेज नॉन इकोनॉमिक फैसिलिटीज स्पेशल इकोनॉमिक जोन एक्सपोर्ट प्रोसेसिंग जोन राइट इन टू डेज लेक्चर वी आर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम इम्पोर्ट प्रोसीजर इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड मीन्स ट्रेड ऑफ इम्पोर्ट एंड एक्सपोर्ट वेन गुड्स आर सेंट टू फॉरन कंट्रीज फ्रॉम इंडिया इट इज कॉल्ड एक्सपोर्ट फॉर इंडिया एंड वेन गुड्स आर ब्रॉड ब्रॉड फ्रॉम अ फॉरन कंट्री इट इज कॉल्ड इम्पोर्ट फॉर इंडिया द प्रोसेस ऑफ इम्पोर्ट एंड एक्सपोर्ट ट्रेड इज डिफरेंट द इम्पोर्ट प्रोसीजर इन डिफरेंट कंट्रीज इज ऑल्सो डिफरेंट द प्रोसीजर टू इम्पोर्ट गुड्स इन इंडिया इज as follows first one is obtaining import license if the importer wants to import the goods listed in the list a uh, list of required items and services published by the government he has to obtain an open general license that is ogl which is easier but if the importer wants to import the goods excluded from the list he has to apply to controller of import trade in this application name of the importer address details of the goods economic condition of the importer name of exporting country etc are mentioned if the officer is satisfied with the details of the application then only he issues the import license if the quota method is prevailing the importer is given a quota certificate describing the fixed quota okay quota means ek decided hota hai ki itna hi wo kar sakte hai right then obtaining foreign exchange when goods are to be imported uh, from a foreign country the payment has to be made in foreign currency or exchange the reserve bank of india has control over foreign exchange first an application is to be sent to the bank permitted by the government for foreign exchange trade before applying the reserve bank of india the bank makes an endorsement on the application form of the importer on the basis of import license then the reserve bank section sanctions the foreign exchange in the application form how much foreign currency is required and of which country is to be shown in us dollars then uh, placing an order after the completion of the procedure of import license and foreign exchange Uh, the importer collects information of different manufacturers and exporters for the details of the goods price and other conditions the importer gives the order to the exporter or manufacturer whose terms and conditions seem suitable to him importer places the order for the import of the goods is called a indent the details regarding the goods price packing insurance the name of the transport company etc are mentioned clearly in indent fourth one is dis- dispatching letter of credit letter of credit means document assuring the exporter regarding the payment of the goods on behalf of importer the exporter demands for letter of credit to know the financial capabilities of the importer the importer has to obtain the letter of credit from his bank and has to send it to the exporter the exporter is assured about getting his money on receiving the letter of credit okay then fifth one is receipt of documents 
the exporter sends all required documents to the importer through his bank generally he sends documents through documents against acceptance or through dp document against payment which are released by the importer sixth one is to obtain the order of receiving goods bill of lading is one of the documents received by the importer showing the ownership of the goods the exporter makes a endorsement on this document for the transfer of ownership of goods in favor of importer this document is to be presented to the office of the shipping company the possession of the goods is with shipping company if the freight is to be paid by the importer after receiving freight shipping company makes an endorsement on the bill of lading giving order to captain of ship to release goods in favor of importer then paying the import duty or excise the importer has to pay import duty on the imported goods the goods are not allowed to bring outside the port until the import duty is paid or exemption of duty certificate is produced on the basis of consular invoice and the certificate of origin of the goods if less excise duty is to be paid a, a bill of entry form has to be prepared in this form complete informations of the name of the ship name of the port of the foreign country from where the goods had been loaded on the ship name of the exporter and address name and address of the importer and total details of the goods are mentioned excise is determined on the basis of the details of this form when the decided duty is paid the excise officer makes an endorsement on the bill of entry and hand over it to the importer the goods on which excise duty is not paid are kept in bounded bonded warehouses then eighth is payment of dock charges the importer has to pay a certain kind of charges for using the place where the vehicle arrives either by airway roadway or seaway such charges are known as dock charges dock charge include all expenses related to the equipment of that place facilities available till the importer gets possession of the goods after boarding the goods from the vehicle a receipt is issued after payment of dock charges is called dock receipt right ninth one is getting possession of the goods after completing all the formalities on the part of the importer the importer gets the possession of the goods the possession of the goods has to be moved out from the bonded warehouse within a certain time limit if the goods are not moved but from the bonded warehouse within the certain time limit then the rent and the demerge have to be paid for using bonded warehouses for excess time right so there are nine steps for import procedure obtaining import license obtaining foreign exchange placing an order dispatching letter of credit receipts of document to obtain the order of receiving goods paying the import duty or excise payment of dock charges getting possession of the goods right now export procedure when a trader of a country sends goods to a trader of a other country it is said that he has exported goods export procedure is different in different countries okay export procedure from india is given here first one is getting an order the exporter is given the order of goods by the importer in the orders details of the goods quantity prices as decided type of packing date of dispatch of goods details of insurance details of transportation services through which the goods have to be sent mode of payment of bill and terms and conditions decided are mentioned before receiving the order the exporter gets the information about the financial capabilities credit abilities uh, and relevant matters of the importer
in obtaining export license the exporter has to obtain an export license in order to export the goods which come under the import export control laws the other items apart from this can be freely exported but for this a general license has to be obtained to obtain license an application is to be made in prescribed form to the trade department of government it is necessary to give clear identity of the exporter details of the exporter and assurance of regular payment of the income tax and other taxes in the application those professionals who export regularly are called export house right then collecting goods the exporter collects the goods as per the importer's order after obtaining the export license if the exporter is the manufacturer he starts manufacturing the goods as per the order and if the exporter is a trader he starts collecting the goods as per the order then foreign exchange activity many controls really uh, related to foreign exchange have been liberalized after economic reform of 1991 okay 1991 mein jo aaya tha na globalization liberalization and privatization ye hum kafi bar sun chuke hain aur pad chuke hain the importers make payment to the exporters amount of bill either in the exports currency or in us dollar the reserve bank and its appointed banks and institutions keep control over foreign exchange therefore the exporter has to make an application to the reserve bank of india with a view to convert the foreign exchange received from the importer into the currency of his country the exporter has to provide the complete details in his application regarding how much foreign exchange he is going to earn the exporter has to submit a copy of this uh, application to the bank or institution through which he makes transactions then obtaining letter of credit the exporter has to contact a shipping company if the goods are to be exported through sea way an application is made to the company which assures about uh, 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 readiness to reach the goods on a certain date the details of goods such as the quantity weight size the date of sending the goods the price etc are mentioned in this application in short shipping order means uh, an order you issued to the captain of the ship by the shipping company to accept the goods in the case when the exporter wants to export the goods in a large quantity and wants to book the whole ship it is called a charter the agreement between the shipping company and the exporter to keep the whole ship on the rent is called charter party agreement then payment of excise duty each exporter has to pay the duty okay the exporter has to obtain the certificate from the duty officer if the duty is not to be paid then a prescribed form containing a public notification certifi- certifying that the goods is duty free if the goods are exciseable the exporter has to prepare a shipping bill in which the details like the name of the importer address price of the goods quantity weight the name of the port where the goods is to be bro- broded the name of the ship and shipping company etc should be described the excise officer calculates the duty on the basis of the price of the goods quantity etc the excise officer determines the amount of duty after checking the shipping bill and inspecting the goods by himself if necessary when the exporter pays the amount of the excise duty he gets the permission to carry the goods on the port then packing and marking of goods packing is very important in international trade the goods are to be transported for a long distance therefore it should be packed in such a way that it does not get damaged due to transportation or due to humidity in the atmosphere sometimes shipping companies also consider the size of the packing while determining the fare 
the packing must be done as per the packing instruction mentioned by the importer in the order making of some import uh, important details related to the goods on the packing is also necessary details like the name and address of the importer and exporter the name of the destination port weight of the goods etc are mentioned in the marking then in getting insurance of the goods in the order to protect the goods against the possible risks in the sea like cyclone damage in goods due to weather due to some situation etc the goods has to be insured to get economic return specially is to be transported through the seaway an agreement is made with the insurance company regarding this the exporter obtains the cover note after paying the minimum the premium after paying the premium determined by the insurance company the insurance company issues the policy against the cover note then obtaining carting order carting order means permission of boarding goods on the ship the exporter has to make an application to the port authority from where the goods are to be exported in order to obtain carting order in this application all the details of uh, shipping bill uh, along with the details of the payment of excise duty are mentioned when the exporter pays the port expenses like the charge of uh, transfer of the goods and the charge of boarding the goods on the ship he obtains the carting order then uh, mat receipt the goods is boarded on the ship on the basis of carting order the representative of the captain of the ship is known as mat mat checks whether the goods are as per the shipping bill or not when the goods are loaded on the ship a receipt is issued by either the captain of the ship or by his representative certifying the acceptance of goods is called mat receipt the captain of the ship checks the packing of the goods if the captain finds the packing improper and the goods is not suitable for transportation it is remarked in the receipt such remarked receipt is known as fall receipt if all the matters are proper then a clean receipt is issued if the mat's receipt is fall it so it means that the goods which have been loaded on the ship are not properly packed or specified in the order and if the goods are damaged during the transportation the shipping company is not responsible for that okay then obtaining bill of lading mat receipt is a receipt of goods loaded on the ship it is not agreement of transporting the goods the exporter obtains bill of lading from shipping company after producing the mat receipt to the shipping company bill of lading is an agreement between the shipping company and the exporter by which the shipping company gives assurance to transport the goods from one port to another details like the name of the exporter the name of the ship freight details of the goods quantity of the goods price weight name of the exporting port terms and conditions of transportation etc are this described in this agreement bill of lading is an important document three copies are prepared one copy remain with shipping company the remaining two copies are sent to the exporter out of which the exporter sends one copy to the importer the importer receives goods on the basis of this copy then certificate of origin when the certificate describing the details where the goods were produced is called the certificate of origin according to the agreement made by different countries respected countries provide relief on import excise in order to get relief under this agreement a certificate of origin for that particular goods is required such certificate can be obtained from trade association chamber of commerce or the government then 14 cons consular invoice 
when the exported goods reach in the country of the importer excise on that goods has to be paid to make the payment of excise simple consular invoice is an important document the consular of importing country is working in the exporting country the exporter obtains a certificate about the price of the goods from the consular is called consular invoice the details like quantity of the goods and price are mentioned in it and the excise is collected on the basis of this okay then sending documents the exporter send the important documents like invoice insurance policy or cover note bill of lading certificate of origin consular invoice and bill of exchange etc to the importer's bank through his bank then last one collection of money the exporter gives the advice to the bank for the collection of the money the exporter writes bill of exchange to the importer in order to collect the amount mentioned in the invoice this bill of exchange may be documents against acceptance or document against payment in document against acceptance the bank of the exporter present the bill of ex- exchange to the importer the bank release the documents of the goods once the bill of exchange is accepted by the importer but if it is a document against payment the bank gives the documents only after the full payment of bill of exchange is made the bank collects the money as per the maturity date of the bill of exchange in document against acceptance whereas in document against payment the amount is sent to the exporter today's topic is over i hope you all understand and enjoyed well still anyone want to ask regarding this topic they can ask me in zoom meeting okay thank you